spoiler in time, folks. Uh, this is a companion show to Cord Killers, where on Cord Killers we talk about all the stuff that lets us watch things. Then we come over here after watching them and talk about them, spoilery style. We're going to talk about Miami Vice, Season 2, Episode 19-ish. The Fix is the name of the episode. The Righteous Gemstones, Season 2, Episode 5. And The Book of Boba Fett, Episode 5 of Season 1. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Yeah, but most importantly, we are joined by Naeem Siddiqui of uh, uh, Geeks Who Drink uh, fame and so much more. Uh, dude, uh, which of these have you watched, Naeem? Uh, I have watched uh, 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 what appears to be season three, episode zero of The Mandalorian. <laughs> yes. Ah, you stole my transition. Yeah, <laughs> I, knew it was, absolutely I need to get right. in there first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's start with The Book of Boba Fett, season one, episode five, or as Naim so correctly put it, another episode of The Mandalorian. They literally uh, call it The Return of the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was, there were, there were two big points where I jumped up off my couch uh, watching this. One was when we see Mando walk into frame for the first time. Two was when the title card came up and they called it the return of Mandalorian. I'm like, oh, this isn't just like a flash. Uh, we're, we're getting lots of Mando. And in fact, we only got Mando. We, we, we didn't see Boba Fett outside of the previously on. Yeah, we got, we got 20 minutes into the episode. I was like, are we, are we going to see Boba Fett this episode? And then we got like 40 minutes in the episode, like 30 minutes in the episode. I'm like... I think we're not seeing Boba Fett. Like, he's only going to be at the end, isn't he? And then he wasn't even at the end. It was just Fennec. Oh. Yeah. Now, you know, now that, Brian, that, so uh, were you bothered by the fact that this was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard instead of Robert Rodriguez? Uh, Look, I... I, I you can't do that to him, Tom. You I, can't set him up like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I ain't even going to play coy. Uh, this was so great. It was great beyond words. It was... It made me so happy, and it reminded me... Um, you know, I'm, I'm in a weird place with Boba Fett where sometimes it's silly, sometimes it's hard edge like Mandalorian. In this case, uh, it reminded me that Mandalorian can be kind of silly too, and, and, and I could love it. Like, it's, it's kind of like uh, 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 the fact that he gets uh, watching Mandalorian fly commercial was amazing. That's oh, that something that could have been yeah. very clumsily handled, but instead was so much fun. Watching him get in trouble from the space cops for speeding, like I was I was on the edge of my seat, like, it's gonna be Kim's convenience, it's gonna be great. And <laughs> and it was. And uh and it even made me get happy for uh for seeing artifacts from the prequels. I had, I even uh, kind of adored him saying wizard <laughs> when he landed. Uh, I I love the droids. Uh, 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 Amy Sedaris. We got uh, we got we got to see Beggars Canyon with yep. Beggars. Yeah. Uh, that uh, one of the droids uh, does the exact same move that my Weimaran or Joy does, where uh, uh, it's uh, the two legged one. It kind of taps on like one foot, one foot, other foot, other foot. Do, 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 and, like it's very clearly uh, doing a dog dance. Oh my god! I. I loved it beyond words. It's great. It's but great. The, the most important piece of lore from this episode is that Amy Sedaris dated a Jawa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just kept talking about how, how furry they were. Furry. Like like, and like the, they were a the, certain and ethnicity. The, and the or... mouth smack. <laughs> furry. Oh, yeah. wow. Like, uh, a mouth smack is worth a thousand words in that. <laughs> uh, there, there was also a couple of really cute nods. Uh, the fact that he has the dark saber and he melts down the uh the staff uh to become whatever it it, it appears that it's melted down to become chain link that he's going to give to grogu yeah, or like whatever mithril mithril did, for grogu yeah did you did you pick up on the subtlety of the package looks oh, like yeah. a little grogu looks like grogu yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, they're like, like we're not going to show you grogu in this episode but we'll we'll show you something that looks like his ears it, well, would, it, was, was, it was so cute tug at your heartstrings it does barely scratch the line of subtlety to make it look exactly like his yeah. head yeah <laughs> i i i, think, I, I, think, I, I the, the reason that it's acceptable it. is that you you like classically tie up a hobo's bundle that way right like i, I think it, it's, i think it's acceptable it's like i just they, i just didn't think it was they, subtle they, no, it's not subtle, but the only thing that stops me from rolling my eyes is like, yeah, but that's also how you tie that. Yeah. Like, they didn't have to use that kind of bundle, sure, but it's like, it's, it's, 
perfectly defensible. Right? Well, and, and it's also a strong indication that you have a good story because it was such good misdirection that I wasn't yeah, bit, like, again, anything. that's an indication that I'm bored is that I'm looking for dumb design things. Uh, uh -huh. but, but, but I'm so engaged with Mandalorian story and so caught up in it that, that it was only when they took a pause to really show it to me that I'm like, Oh, that's cute. You know? Yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I do think it was odd that we spent this much time showing you why Mandalorian is a better show. Uh, <laughs> because, yeah. because when, when, when we first see the meat cutting, I'm like, Oh good. Boba Fett's getting away from heritage stuff off Tatooine. And we're going to see other parts of the universe. I love this. A meat packing plant. We never see that you know, with alien meat hanging up and alien butchers. And I bet there's a mafia guy in here. Cause that's kind of the trope. And I was right about all that, except it wasn't Boba Fett. It was Mando. Uh, and they had really nothing to do with Boba Fett. And this only ties into Boba Fett in that it explains to us how Mando ended up on Tatooine where Fennec could go talk to him. Uh, otherwise all of this stuff is pointing to the next season of Mandalorian. Uh, here's why he wants to go back and see Grogu. Uh, here's what happened to him in his, in his coven or, or cohort or whatever you call it. Uh, covert. I think it's called covert. Um, and, and none of that really matters to Boba Fett. Yeah. A friend of mine, uh, uh my friend Corey, it said to me in a, in a chat, uh, it's, it's hilarious that in order to play it safe, Disney greenlit a show that was a Boba Fett show in everything but name. And when people loved it, they made an actual Boba Fett show and then made an ex episode exclusively featuring the stand-in showing the stand-in superiority. It's like, yeah, that's kind of what happened. And part John, of me John, wishes John they just like, taken a week off of Boba. Episodes, right? Yeah. It's a part of me wishes they'd taken a week off of Boba and just called this Mandalorian special episode, you know, season three, episode zero, like I said, or something like that, or like, or had it been, been like a Christmas special, even like had it been like, a, you know, release it at Christmas before Boba. And then you just, ne once Boba gets to that point after episode four or whatever, you know, oh, this is the point where Mando enters the story. They're like, this is the point where you now you see Fennec Shan had, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I, that, I, that is probably what I think would have made more sense to me, at least. I've spoken before about how I'm really trying to remain open to what whatever it is they're trying to do with Book of Boba Fett. Like uh, the jaded younger version of me would want to call it a cash grab you know, with a more you know approachable name. Uh, but but now I'm beginning to see they're really trying to distinguish themselves. And we've I've spoken before about how, you know, I love the hard, sharp edge of Mandalorian but I am trying to appreciate the wacky goofball young adult fiction that is uh, uh, Boba Fett. And it, it's almost as though they've shown a spotlight on the difference between the two. Like it, it, it's as though they released a press release to me personally. I'll say yeah. that this one episode of uh, Boba Fett told me more about the show, The Mandalorian, than the previous four episodes of <laughs> Boba Fett told me about the Boba Fett show. Yes. Like, yeah. I know about the Mandalorians as a species. They got eliminated. There's three of them left. Now there's a rift. They're fight. Like, ah, oh, so good. The duel, the dark saber. What? It's the great. It was awesome. The, 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 was great idea, the idea that it gets heavier the more he uses it, the exact opposite of a, of a lightsaber. Like, and you and you really see, like, the weight of it, like, like, or both when he's using it and when the other guy's using it. And you're like, not sure really, if he's really supposed to have it, if he's using it the right way. Like, like that's great. Awesome. Why? What? It was a great episode of The Mandalorian. It's a great, it great episode great. of a show I've literally never seen. I know more. I don't, I have not seen. Mm, 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 mm. That's just, <laughs> I, I might watch The Mandalorian now, but I, I really don't want to watch the book of Boba Fett anymore. <laughs> this is such a good episode of a completely well, different question, Oh, hey, question did, is... did you never watch The Mandalorian? No, I've Ooh. seen zero Mandalorian. <gasps> Gotta go back. This, this is a good episode I, of The Mandalorian. Oh, that would be fun. For who? <laughs> For you can <laughs> I, I understand that. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a classic Bryce Bryan interaction. That would be fun. Or who? <laughs> that is a lot. But, uh, but, it but, would be fun for Bryce, too. I have a feeling. It would be fun for you, Bryce. I mean, it's, it's a good this show. It seems like a better show than The Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> it really is. It, so, it just is. Here's the it thing. Going back, going back to what Brian was saying, <laughs> I have been enjoying Book of Boba Fett. I have not enjoyed every single minute. I found some problems with it, but I've been enjoying it. But it is weird to have this episode and go, oh, right, but I haven't been enjoying it as much as I did this. Yeah. Like, it really does point it out to you. And I wonder, okay, so is Mando gonna, 
we are we going to see him join up? Because he kind of says like, I'm sort of busy. I, I got to do something first. Uh, and we know that the thing he wants to do is go stop by Grogu and give him his mithril. Uh, so are th- we I, even going to see Mandalorian in the next episode? I am absolutely certain we will see him. Uh, but they masterfully got a verbal contract from him for a pro bono appearance on a Boba Fett yet untitled episode. So my guess is keep your eyes peeled for some kind of moment where Boba Fett's like, oh, this is it. We're, this is it for old Bobes. I guess I'm finally got got. I can't believe it. I survived everything except for... <gasps> what? Who's appearing right now? I thought you could use some help, and I brought a little guy too. He's, he's got a Han Solo. Yeah, yeah, Han Solo the Death Star for sure. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Sorry to ruin it. <laughs> I'm certain. I... It, fe- it feels about right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's my one concern is that, like, I, I don't want to see Grogu in this show, right? Like, I think it makes sense to have Mando. It, it was a little odd to have a fully Mando episode. It was a great episode, so I don't care. Um, but it was a little weird to do. I've got bad um, news for you, Naim. Uh, uh, who's flying a ship with a removed astromech and a, baby, a, a Grogu-sized seat in the back i'm excited to see grogu in mando season three i just be a little i just be like all right we're bringing him yeah. into boba like it really it really feels like it takes we takes the legs see, off from under boba we fett. will not see grogu in the in book of boba fett i guarantee you I, I guarantee I, I've, got, I've got two very different guarantees from from the these two sides of the screen here so <laughs> yeah, we will not see grogu in book of boba fett uh see. what i'm guessing we will see is mando r- arriving back on tatooine did you do your thing and see your guy yeah, I don't want to talk about it. And in The Mandalorian next season, we will see him leave Tatooine, visit Grogu, whatever happens, happens, and then say, I, I made a promise to Boba, I got to go back. And we will, we'll have a little crossover timeline thing there. That's yeah. my guess. Uh, by the way, Naeem, uh, if, uh, <laughs> if Chris Minton was here, he would say, this is how gambling works, is you <laughs> accept both of our bets and take a percentage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I, I, yes, exactly. I got I got uh, five to one odds on Brian. I got four to one odds on Tom. Uh, anybody want to bet? Right. Uh, please hit me up at twittercom kuhan. I will take bets. <laughs> In uh, and then mint your bet as an NFT. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll keep it coming. Uh, hey, uh, any other thoughts on Book of Boba Fett episode five? No, except I- except for that those good feelings you got, Bryce. There's a whole season of them. One season them. of them. Oh, but two aren't there two seasons? There's two seasons. There are two seasons, two seasons, but there, I can guarantee you one full season of those feelings. I might need you to tell me which season first. First. Before the, the first season. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The first season is, 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 is better. Um, okay. I, what is, is as I was watching episode four of Boba, I was like worried. I'm like, am I, am I just kind of over Star Wars stuff? And then this episode, I was like, no, <laughs> I just I just maybe don't love and this show as much as I love I, other I, things. I know I interrupted you with this earlier too, but John Favreau wrote all the Book of Boba Fett episodes, yeah. including the Mandalorian one. So yeah. it's not the writing. I also really prefer the flashback stuff in Boba to the like the modern Boba as mm. Daimyo stuff. So like it just I don't know. Now, don't know. do you suppose that's because one of those two stories has a plot? advancement narrative structure a protagonist Momentum. lore <laughs> exposition <laughs> protagonist and Subtext, the other one text, has content. a guy sitting on a chair ruling Maybe. with re- no respect <laughs> i get no respect uh, well, well the, the, the <laughs> no second respect. one is is just not a full story yet it might yeah. get there but yeah. it's just it's being told in in, in little pieces i agree it's just it's just the pieces aren't po- grabbing me like yeah, other yeah. television does you know so all right, that is the Book of Boba Fett, season one, episode five. Uh, Naim, thank you so much for for sticking around and, t- and chatting the Mandalorian. I mean, Boba Fett with us. <laughs> the Manda Fett, yeah, yeah. I, uh, glad to be here. Always glad to show up and and do this show. Heck Remind yeah. people where they can go to find more of you. Uh, Twitter.com slash Kuhan, YouTube.com slash Geeks Who Drink. Uh, uh, look for our Baseball Weekly wherever fine podcasts are found. Excellent. Thank you, Naim. Let's talk about the Righteous Gemstones, season two, episode five. Uh, sort of like Book of Boba Fett, uh, we we get an entire flashback episode. Uh, we 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 flash back to the nineties, the ninety four, right? Uh, where we uh, the episode is called Interlude Two. Oh, it's Christmas nineteen ninety three. Uh, 
and uh, the, the kids are kids, and and Eli runs into the father uh, of his friend that we've we've met earlier this season, who wants to give him some cash money, and we see how the uh, current accountant got his job. And and one over Eli as well. Uh, yeah, let's start with Martin, uh, who already is a total boss in this show. He's amazing and one of the, my favorite characters. Now all of a sudden he's got this badass mustache. His first day on the job, he sees a, he sees an attempt to launder three million dollars of cash through the the uh, to avoid taxes, and is proud of Eli Gemstone for turning it down. In the, in although you know we have an indication that he is sorely sorely tempted to take it, uh, and then uh, you know minutes later watches Eli's father shoot the dude <laughs> and helps him bury the body. Hell of a first day on the job. Yeah. I mean, he believes a true believer. That's what I didn't realize about Martin. When we meet him, he seems like kind of a jaded accountant who, who's sort of like, yeah, well, you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, but in this, he's like, he's a true believer. He, he believes in Eli and is willing to go that far, <laughs> uh, to, 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 bury someone under a roller coaster. And I guess we do get a flash forward right at the end where we see Eli riding the roller coaster and we see Junior plotting. Right. And and we, you know, they made a significant moment of why is he riding the Exodus roller coaster again and again and again. Um, and to be honest, that's an interesting question, Tom. Uh, I, I had always considered Martin still a true believer, uh, although more, maybe in more of a position of, for the greater good, he'll he'll yeah, suffer yeah. through the spectacle and Which the, makes the sense, ridiculous right? pageantry of the gemstone that, empire. That first, that first interaction is like, well, for the greater good, I better help him bury this body in the concrete. And I guess that just widens out over time, right? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, hats off uh, to the new standard in de-aging on the righteous gemstones because... That is flawless. That is a 43-year-old uh, 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 Eli Gemstone. It's amazing. Cool. Yo, do you disagree? Uh, or no, 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 I don't. Uh, I, I, I agree. It, it looked good. Uh, 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 other things, uh, uh, I assume the children are, uh, this is Andrew Main's joke, uh, I assume the children are also de-aged because that's the only way they can be that perfect, is that that has to be actually... Danny that, McBride. That is one thing that crossed my mind was, man, he must have studied under Danny McBride. Like he got Danny McBride lessons. I mean, Judy's pretty good, but yeah, uh, the, the, the young Jesse is like spot on. So good. Uh, uh, wh what about you? What stuck out? Uh, it was, it was nice seeing baby Billy, uh, and, and getting a little more about, uh, you know, what happened after he he left the mall, we still don't know why he drove across the border in North Carolina, uh, what he's up to there. I thought maybe we'd get something from that at the end of this episode, so I'm still looking forward to that. But honestly, I just love the bit with Roy Gemstone, uh, with with the dad wandering over with the gun, which you just think is a funny aside, right? Uh, don't forget, you know, the the, the dad's a, the grandpa's alive. Uh, and he's crazy. And it's like, oh, no, he's going to solve a problem. Oh, no, and it was definitely it was definitely Chekhov's gemstone. <laughs> it was. Well, and he shot it already. So you're like, I guess they already shot the gun and used the gun. But uh, yeah, no, he's going to shoot it again. And, and not just the and, gun, but also the house. Right. We start the season with Gideon taking this house we've never seen before, but oh, we see right. his decrepit. And now we get to see it in its heyday. And, and they like, even talked about all the weird stuff that must be tucked in all the corners and yeah. how he really lost it at the end. And, and I that pays off. the way they played very realistically because uh, because my, my grandma had Alzheimer's and she was very much like this, uh, where one moment to the next, you don't know if there's clarity or not. Uh, the, the thing with my grandma was when I would walk in a room and say hello, she would say, hello, Tom, how are you? How's Eileen? What's going on? And my mom, who would be right next to her, she'd be like, oh, is Anna here? Her long dead sister. Oh. Uh, and, and it would just be like back and forth, back and forth. And they captured that with Roy Gemstone, uh, where he's saying something that makes perfect sense. And then the next second, he's off. Sometimes it's clear when he's being honest with Eli about, I should have been nicer to you, and then immediately can't recognize Eli. Other times it's like, 
Did he know? Did he not know? Did he shoot the guy on purpose? I think maybe he shot the guy on purpose, but there's plausible I mean, deniability. Uh, also, cause... also the guy definitely uh, announced like, I have a deadly I weapon and I blended. intend to kill you. <laughs> like yeah. if there's if there's a clearer case of stand your ground, I can't think of one. But well, that's not kill. I thought about that. I'm like, they didn't need to cover this up. I mean, it would have been a it would have been PR nightmare. It would yeah. But legally, they would have been like, my father is clearly out of his mind. You know, uh, I don't know. He shouldn't have been, been able to get a hold of a loaded gun, but uh, even out of his mind, he had stand your ground. Like, there's so many aspects to it that they they probably legally could have gotten out of it. They just didn't want to deal with the publicity well, around it. And, I guess. and also, uh, one of the things that we've talked about is how clear it appears to be, at least at various uh, intervals. Uh, how committed they are to 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 God's law, and and in 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 that case, I could totally see Eli Gemstone thinking like, why would I involve you know render under Caesar what's his like, you know it's like like what do I care about the cops? I know that uh, that I'm square with God on this, so let's just bury this body and and ride a roller coaster. I don't know <laughs> that that is the godly way to bury someone. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also you know you get a lot of cops poking around and they're going to ask, well, how did you know this guy? Why was he in town? We just yeah. found a bunch of cash yep. that he has. Like that, there's a lot of him being a loose end is easier for the and gemstones. Th then we get back to uh, Eli Gemstone also being kind of a greater good kind of guy. Mm -hmm. um, something happened during this discussion and I had a thought I cannot unthink. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this prediction and just pin it to the wall. I am now as a result of us chatting convinced that baby Billy uh, is not abandoning his future next kid, but instead was inspired to run and track down his original son. And that like oh. in that moment. Yeah, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree yeah. with you. He is not leaving North Carolina to get away. He is leaving to make amends so that he, he will, feel like he can do right by the new baby. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose what I'm saying is, well, whatever, whatever Cloudy Hayes is now totally gone. <laughs> like, like there is, mm -hmm. there is no question. But yeah, yeah. no, I think you're right. But, but what if maybe Billy's as awful as we have seen him to be <laughs> is even worse. What if, yeah. What if he <laughs> goes up there to do something way worse? I don't, I don't know well, what it is, but I, I think I, I think I'm following the horrible thought line you're going on, which is, uh, which is baby Billy thinks, you know what? I want to start fresh with this new baby. And I, I don't want the guilt of the old uh, hanging around. There yeah. are many ways to solve that. Is oh. that what you're worried about, Bryce? I'm not worried about anything. I just think the funniest thing for Walton Goggins to do is to make it look like he's going to be on a redemption arc and then do and then something very son. crass or awful. Uh, and, like maybe, yeah, uh, yeah. maybe join a different religion. Maybe join a different religion or uh, clean up some loose ends or I don't know, do Eliminate something weird problem, with the sun. Uh, limit, resolve the problem in some way. Like, we, this is a wild card character. It's very, it, we, just, it seems we're in a precarious spot to say that the wild card character is going to do something very sentimental and sweet. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. Dang it. Now the cloud's back. <laughs> Cloudy it Bryce Castillo. Cloud right back. Yeah. <sighs> uh, uh, More like uh, Bryce Cloud Steelio. Uh, whenever you get a Christmas episode like this, it always ends up getting recommended around Christmas time. Do you think this will be a. Uh, oh, a it's going to be a total December hit. I mean. I can't people? think of a more sentimental moment than the moment <laughs> that Walton Goggins offloads a bunch of multi-level marketing crap and then complains that they didn't get him a gift. <laughs> oh, and, and they 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 tease him into like, yeah, we didn't get you anything. And then they Sorry. reveal that they did. And then they say, no, seriously, in front of the children, why did you abandon your family? <laughs> right. And then right, a qu quick left turn of like, after we played with you and gave you a gift, also, why did you abandon your children? Um, yeah, it was nice to see uh, Amy Lee uh, mm -hmm. in, involved as well. Although, in some ways, it was a little bit of a missed opportunity because we didn't see a whole different dynamic with Amy Lee around. Uh, as we, the kids all seem pretty much the same. Uh, I, I think. Well, um, I think this is the most displeased we've seen her with Eli. Like mm -hmm. she was uh, last time. That's true. Last time yeah, she yeah. was distracted by Baby Billy, but this time, like she straight up is like, I don't. 
you know, what's going on here? You are very ambitious and it is making me uncomfortable. There is a loose end to her story in this episode of like, and then, and, and so because she was worried about this, we, we, they sort of try to show us when she, when, when Eli says, Oh, it was just a, you know, a, 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 a shot, no harm done. Like, Oh, I guess everything's fine. And she goes away, but I feel like we're going to get more on that at some point. Yeah. Super good. Yeah. Uh, Would you have uh, turned so, away the, so, the bag of cash? What's that? Would you have turned away the bag of cash? Um, what are you, a cop? You know you have to tell me if you're a cop. I'm not saying I'm a cop. Okay. Then uh, let me uh, I, I, I pretend I'm <laughs> mouthing words and, <laughs> and, and, and pointing to my chest and, my, and covering my ears and shaking my head no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And mouthing the words question. I'm wearing any, a wire. Any other thoughts on this episode of The Righteous Gemstones? No, it's great. It's great. It's better than it has any right to be. Season two, episode five, The Righteous Gemstones. Let's talk about Miami Vice. Season two, episode 19, The Fix, with not only special guest Harvey Firestein, not only special guest Michael Richards, famous as Kramer, but also NBA all-star Bill Russell and also NBA star playing Bill Russell's son, who was an active NBA star at the time, Bernard King. Tom? Yes. Uh, I, I did not expect, mm, uh, I, I spent the first like 15 minutes thinking like, well, that was a good run, Miami Vice. I think we're done now. Uh, and then I kept watching and it got more and more bonkers. Um, first of all, <laughs> the opening segment where they spend one full minutes just showing birds, birds in an aviary. Uh, like what kind of B-roll licensing uh, was going on, you know, what kind of like, ah, this is a 30 minute episode and we have to fill a 46 minute slot. Like and what was going on with that? Then, then a dude shows up, they complete a transaction and then the dude shoots the other dude and runs and, and the cops jump in guy runs into the jungle in an aviary, bro. You're in a net. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going to go? <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, and then, and then they go to space future court. <laughs> <laughs> I am fascinated with that courtroom. I'm like, okay, what was shooting there before and how good of a deal did they get? If they're like, well, look, if you, if you don't have to change the set, we'll let you sneak in and shoot a Miami vice scene in this here is, in between. This is definitely cut footage from Battlestar Galactica. The first right? season. <laughs> Easily, it's not even easily. like clean. Like when you watch it, you can tell it's like very porous concrete. It's very it's, been quickly. It's, it's this. It's, it's, the, the, it's this. Yeah, it's the thing behind Brian, which is, by the way, uh, foam. Styrofoam. Not yeah. even. <laughs> God, I don't. Oh, God. Uh, and then, well, and obviously, then... we've never been to Miami, and we don't know that that's what all courtrooms look like in Miami. In uh, speaking of sets, yeah. did you notice that the judge lives in the same house that Phil Collins bought from a few episodes ago? <laughs> I'm willing to overlook that, Your Honor. Uh, There's for only one house. Of, but that courtroom. Okay, then, then I have one last question. Uh, where do you sit on this new theme of original music in which the lyrics are the thoughts of the person on screen <laughs> for a minute at a time? Like, uh, the, the guy's brilliant. on the court and is like, Oh, deep water, so deep, <laughs> where do I go? Swish. <laughs> Um, here are the things I liked about this episode. Also, that was a licensed um, song. Oh, was it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Much like the Madonna, the gambling song from the beginning. <laughs> really? Gambling. Gambling. It's like that was an, <laughs> an instrumental version of a new Madonna song at the time. <laughs> Sorry. Which is why it goes on for so long. <laughs> uh, cause they had to milk it for all it was worth. Got it. Here are, here are the things I liked in this episode. Uh, I, I liked uh, uh, Bill Russell's acting. I actually, I thought he was, he was, he was decent. I wasn't sure at first when they didn't give him any lines. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to gamble but, on dogs, if you don't mind. But, yeah, or, or when he suddenly like went from the horse track to the dog track without explanation. But, <laughs> but later on when he's talking to his son, I'm like, you know what? I believe this, 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 this may not be the best acting they could have got, but 
the, Bill Russell did a good job. I, 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 I was, I was surprised. I thought Michael Richards was fantastic. I only thought he was Kramer in a passing way. I, th I thought he was really good at, as a, uh, as sort of a, I'm not a jerk. I'm just a powerful jerk kind of, kind of guy. Um, I liked that there was a Titans comic book in the bug van. I don't know if you caught that. No, I uh, didn't. DC, DC comic. Um, and, uh, I like that Bill Russell killed Kramer. Um, I liked that it was, I was genuinely surprised at how everything turned out, uh, which is. It got better towards the end. I thought, I thought like you, Brian, I was like, Ooh, this is, this is not, this is, this is going to be hard to get through. And it, and it picked up. It's like, it was like, it was a 20 minute episode that they had to stretch or something. Well, part of the reason that it was stretched is, uh, we're entering a new phase of direction in which I imagine the director is behind the camera doing nothing but the stretch gesture because the <laughs> acting style appears to be. Let me ask my question. Two, three, four, five. Reaction, huh? Two, three, well, four. Wait, two, tick, 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 tick. Stretch, Jester. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. With, with the well, and then stretch some more. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, 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 missed, uh, they missed an obvious line. Uh, no harm done should have been no harm, no foul. I mean, because it's basketball. Ooh. That have been too too on the nose. Oh, uh, speaking of which, uh, surprisingly good, believable, dramatic performances from the the guys in the van as they're mm. as they're figuring out the drama and realizing mm -hmm. how in deep the judge is. And yep. and 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 it is a bit on the nose to spell out the subplot, which is sometimes getting answers doesn't make anything easier. Uh, but <laughs> but but also like yeah, that was that 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 was a pretty good. I mean. I'd, I'd hate to say it, but man, they really pulled it out in the last half of this one. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I thought this one got a lot better towards the end. Uh, Harvey Firestein was also, he wasn't in it very much, but, but he was, he was very young Harvey Firestein, but he was, he was very Harvey, Harvey Firestein, uh, even back then. And I, I thought he was great too. So that the reason we're watching these is for the guest appearances. And I, I thought with this one was, was uh, full of uh, excellent guest appearances. So one weird thing is the moment, uh, first of all, uh, we've seen enough episodes where they're constantly talking about Ortega. Then they re find out that Ortega, you're a girl. Significant plot point goes oh, to, right, goes yeah. to trial, gets bond or whatever. Um, I'm looking at the actress and, and I'm like, man, she seems so familiar. So I go to IMDb, not credited. I go to the fan wiki page, not credited. I, I cannot find out who played Ortega. She's not in the credits. She's not in any of the wiki stuff. And I will co-sign it. Like, uh, not yeah, if through. that information is on the internet, it is not readily available who that woman was. And that, that's rare that you don't have somebody going like, well, it's not credited, but the woman who played Ortega was uh, Judy Stephanopoulos. So, you, you know uh, what it might have been is like a union rule where she didn't speak any lines. Well, sure. That would explain the, the non-credit in the credits and the IMDb, but not the internet. Not you know, figuring Miami out who Vice she is. Baseball, yeah. Pointing out like, yeah, but the person who she is, is, uh, yeah. And, or even saying like, we don't know who it is. We've tried to figure it out. Like just no mention at all. Seems odd. It's I, gotta be somewhere. Uh, I wonder, maybe, maybe we're conflating Ortega with another like long arc because it also doesn't seem like she's a part of any other episodes other than the fix. Uh, I mean, they definitely mention. I, I'm certain it was Ortega in two or three of the previous episodes, and it was I, leading up to this moment. Um, and and I, and I, I, I agree, the name seemed familiar, but usually, mm -hmm. like the wiki is usually pretty good about when. There are characters who like make returns and stuff. Like it, it's it, it is very strange that there's like this weird gap here for a yeah. well documented show. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, when, e even if we're being confused on who Ortega is in this episode, she's right. not there. Like there is a woman in this episode that is not credited. Uh, also, shouts out for the world's weirdest college basketball auditorium where everybody crowds in tight as can be in exactly one bleacher shaking their their pennants and pom poms jumping up at every shot uh and then meanwhile the other three bleachers are very sparsely populated hey man college sports was more relaxed back then you wanted to sit close to the team you didn't have assigned seats uh, apparently it was uh, in a high school gym yeah. I, yeah college sports was different very rough back when the when the kudas played very rough foley work and very rough adr on this one
uh, compared to previous oh, yeah. episodes in multiple places too. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But, uh, in the end, one might yeah, in the end, when I thought they were going to lose, there was a real buzzer beater of an ending. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. That is, uh, Miami vice, the fix. Uh, we will be, uh, not watching Miami vice next week. Uh, it'll be a couple of weeks because uh, Raised by Wolves is coming back and Boba Fett's winding down. Uh, but when we do come back, I believe the, the week of February 20th, uh, we will be watching the episode called Payback starring Frank Zappa. Uh, so keep that oh, one. Uh, uh, which, which I accidentally started watching because Peacock just directly flows you in. Uh, I believe he goes to visit the exact dude that was running around the aviary uh, uh, in Oh, because it is the next episode right after the fix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. We we got a continuing storyline next time, uh, but again, that's a that's a couple weeks from now uh, for Miami Vice uh, two twenty, which would be payback with special guest Frank Zappa. Uh, but that is it for Miami Vice two nineteen. The fix uh, next week we will be talking about the Righteous Gemstones episode six. Raised by Wolves is back, season two, episode one, and uh, Book of Boba Fett. Episode six. Uh, thanks again to Nime for being with us. Find him as Kuhan, K U H A N, on Twitter. Uh, and uh, thank you all for supporting us at patreon.com slash cord killers, where you get these episodes a little earlier and a little easier formatted to avoid the spoilers. Until next time, I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. We'll spoil you then. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>